everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Your Weight. And today I'm going to be reviewing P Valley Season 1, Episode 4, A Trap, okay? And it was a lot of traps that happened in the episode. But I'm going to save the Mercedes storyline for last because, baby, I still need time to just collect myself after everything that happened with her. So I'm going to start with my favorite, M, I, Cricket Letter, Cricket Letter, I, Cricket Letter, Cricket Letter, I, how back, how back, I. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah, I can't help it, but my girl got some shine this episode, you guys. But the beginning of the episode opens up. This she's giving this dude a lap dance, and this lame dude talking about uh, why he got to pay for her to take her clothes off. It's like giving a homeless man a million dollars. You know it ain't gonna end right. And I'm just like, sir, why are we in the strip club then? If you ain't trying to make it rain, why why are you talking to me? Why are you in the strip club? I'm just really confused about this. So I was happy that. Um, Mercedes popped up after he sent up here telling her it's degrading for women to be stripping in the strip club. But then she called him freckles. Talking about, uh, you need to give her some money. Make it rain on her, okay? So, um... When she told him to imagine that she homeless because he was he's getting on his little soapbox talking about how this is terrible that what you women be doing this. She was like, imagine she homeless and you Jesus. That's how that's the level that he needed to make it rain on her. But when he threw the money on the ground, I said, wow. So you going to be disrespectful like that? You just going to throw the money on the ground like that? And Mercedes was like, pick it up. And then Miss, Mississippi tried to be like, it's okay. I saw something. No, Mississippi. Boo boo, you gotta, you gotta respect yourself, okay? You gotta stop taking this smack from these little raggedy knucklehead dudes. So Diamond came, you know, Diamond go save her. He put, jumped in, grabbed old dude by the neck, roughed him up a little bit. I was mad. I died laughing when he slapped him with the money. So he basically told him to pick it up. Uh, he picked up the money, but he told him to hand her the money. So, he got him all the way together. Freckles, I bet you ain't going to be doing nothing like that again. And then we see him towards the end of the episode when Mississippi get her little, her little spotlight shot. We see him making it rain. I was just like, I tell you about these little raggedy fools coming up here. You going to come up in my place and judge me? And you still, you sitting up here waiting for somebody to shake it, shake it something for a little bit of cash? Stop it. Ugh, the hypocrisy of it all. I was just like, ugh, he really just... I, he really bothered my spirit, okay? But also to Mississippi, why won't you just date Diamond? Like, this, he a good dude. He always there for you. He always got your back. He makes sure you don't get disrespected. Like, just be with him. I don't understand what the issue is at this point in the first place. So, um, afterwards, you know, Mercedes kind of have a talk with her. Like, hey, you can't let nobody pull that weight on you. Like, you got to stand up for yourself and what you believe in and then she was like but what if he was right like what if it is wrong what we're doing so you can still tell that he was like messing with her psyche got into her head now she was feeling a certain type of way i'm sorry i'm tired it's late um she was feeling a certain type of way about stripping now and so we find out that when she's talking to gidget see i remember gidget's name now okay i remember gidget's name so she was talking telling gidget that she overheard Uncle Cliff when she was doing her little sleepy beauty thing about the club being in debt and that there was a possibility that Uncle Cliff can like, you know, lose the casino. And she knows that Andre has something to do with it because she knew that he was in the boom boom room up there with Andre talking about the casino. So, um, I think it's really interesting because... You know, when we look at Mississippi, she's this, you know, she's gorgeous. She's this beautiful girl. She's great on the pole. But, like, she thinks that that's all that she has to offer. And so when we see towards the, later, towards the middle of the episode, when it's Mercedes last night, and then she's telling Mercedes, like, hey, I'm not like you. Like, I'm not brave. I'm not strong. Like, I'm pretty. Like, that's all that I have. But I do like that Mercedes challenged them. And I'll talk about this when I get more to Mercedes, that if y'all stripping, like, let it be for a purpose. I mean, this is your job. You should be working your job to help save up money as well. But I would like to learn more about Gidget um, and Mississippi, their back lives, because they made it seem like, hey, we're not in the same predicament as you. We have other things that are happening. So I do hope this is episode four. We only have six more episodes, but I do hope that we will get to learn a little bit more about Gidget and also, too, about Mississippi as well to understand where she's coming from. But I felt that the insecurities that she had 
um, where she felt like all she has to offer is her face. Um, so I love that towards the end of the episode, uh, when she finally said she's going to be brave and she's going to be strong and when they can't find Mercedes to do her dance, that she takes the place and that she does a very fantastic job. And I thought that the, oh, the blue lighting that they had for Mercedes was just beautiful. But also too, there's this shot where they come behind her as she's like doing her routine and all you see is the lights from the cameras and you see the money and everything is kind of been, um, blacked out. I thought that was really good. They do such a great job with the performances and making you feel as though that it's only that person performing and you um, watching. I think they do a very, very fantastic job with that. So I'm excited to see Mississippi get her shine that she is due because you know that Mississippi um, is the baddest on the pole. Wherever y'all want to say Mississippi is the baddest as far as technique and actually what she can do on the pole. Mercedes got the whole package, the whole entertainment piece, but Mississippi is, is a bad, she, she bad on that pole, y'all. So, <clears throat> I guess who I want to talk about next? I guess I can talk about Raggedy Andre, and then we can go into, um, mm, you know what? Let me talk about Uncle Cliff real quick, okay? Because Uncle Cliff got, <laughs> Uncle Cliff got stuff. So, Lil Murder shows up to the club, and... So Little Murder shows up to the club from Mercedes last night. He walked to the front. Clearly he didn't learn nothing from the last time he tried to walk to the front. So Diamond was just like, I know that you're not about to try me tonight. Like we're not about to do this. But thank goodness that Uncle Cliff came and saved Little Murder Raggedy behind. And so Little Murder go in and he tries to get DJ Never Scared to play a song. And then he's like, dude, there ain't no way I'm gonna play this on Mercedes last dance. No, you're not about to get me killed. So he goes to Mercedes, while she's talking to May, you see May made sure he told her that he was gonna find a way out that ankle bracelet to come see her dance before she was done. So basically, she he the way that he rode up to her, I didn't even think nothing of it. But the way that they got mad, that was like, hey man, what you doing? Like they were like, see these little young dudes, they don't know how to act. I didn't think it was nothing wrong with how he came at her, but it seemed like he was going to ask her, could he play his song and could she dance to it? But he just told her, you know what, good luck. You know, I ain't going to just good luck on your last night. I wish you nothing but the best. So his friend was upset because he felt like he should have checked Maine and his dudes. Like, you shouldn't have let them roll up on you like that. You being a little punk. And then he was like, that ain't all that you. I heard you being a little punk about making a reference about him and Uncle Cliff. So... He get mad and he beat the brakes off of his friend talking about you dead to me. I don't want to ever see you again. You dead to me. So Diamond pulled him out the club. He got kicked out of the club. And man and them like, yeah, he should got kicked out of the club. These little youngins. And so then he outside smoking his cigarette. And then he ends up hearing his song play when Miss Mississippi starts her set. This man almost start crying because, I mean, it is a big deal. His song was banging. I ain't gonna lie. The song was jumping. But... He tells um, Uncle Cliff, when Uncle Cliff comes out to check on him that I made that song about you because the song was called like Fallen or something like that. So he was like, oh, you did? He was like, well, show me. I was like, what you mean show you? So he bring a little murder back up into his office and stuff and they start kissing and stuff. And then, you know, little Marty taking his little pants off and stuff, taking uh, Uncle Cliff's pants off. And he was like, hold up, you not finna roll up in here raw dogging. And so he was like, no, no, I gotta, he had a condom. I was like, thank you, safe sex. Thank you. I appreciate you guys putting that on TV for everyone and let people know people still do be using condoms. So I love the scene of them having sex, which I was like, finally, because like, are y'all going to just do this whole build up and be playing and flirting around with each other? Or are you going to be about it and actually have Uncle Cliff get some? And I was like, I, I felt that I said, I see you, Uncle Cliff. You better get yours. OK, talking about come show me. Huh? Huh? But I thought it was really nice how um, the lighting is red for them and blue for uh, Mississippi, but how they go in between the shots of her performance of her being brave, but also too for um, Uncle Cliff being brave and kind of being like, hey, what's good? Because you know, Uncle Cliff was running from it before. I was like, what you scared for, Uncle Cliff? Go ahead and get you some. And so, you know, for their situations, like the trap is because of what happens to Mercedes, it's a trap that basically makes Mississippi have to believe in herself and bet on herself and be brave, which is something that she said she couldn't do. And Uncle Cliff finally said, you know what, I'm gonna get mine. 
And then, you know, he did what it was. And then also, too, Lil Murder finally got his song played. So we kind of see some good things happening for everyone. So let's talk about Andre Raggedy behind. Because he raggedy. He's still raggedy. He's going to still be raggedy even after this episode. So we find out a little bit more information on the Promised Land Casino deal. So essentially, they need the pink... The reason why they need the pink is because there's rules that the casinos have to be open on water. And so since the pink is um, a business that's along the water, that's why they actually need the property um, in order to be compliant to get the casino built. So the way that Isaiah Washington plays the mayor like really scares me because he's a little too good at it. Because the way that he said the N word when... Andre sat up here and told Bill, the little white dude that I was talking to about the issue with Uncle Cliff knowing about the plan. So he told he tells Bill that, hey, we're going to make up a new ordinance that basically will have to force the pink to close. He said, give him two weeks. He'll make sure everything happens. I personally thought throughout the episode that he was going to put the ordinance in place to where they had to close down before Mercedes last dance. But I guess that's still coming up in a later episode. So. The way that he cursed old girl out, his uh, secretary told her to get the hell up, get get up out of there. I was just like, sir, like, I know you're upset, but you don't have to be disrespectful. Even Andre was like, I don't even understand how you still have a secretary or how people ain't called in on you. But basically, he was like, hey, you need to start thinking with your head and keep your little pain pain up out of the pink and get this together because there's no reason why we should be in this predicament now anyway, okay? So he wasn't too happy with his godson. And so he tells him he has until the end of the week to make sure this closes. He can't lose the sale because then they're going to find somewhere else, another state, another city to build a casino. So <sighs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just, I'm super tired. I've been working out. I started a whole new diet and workout plan. So my body just hurts. So let's talk about Autumn, Haley, Lakeisha, whatever this girl name. I still don't know what this girl name is. So at the beginning of the episode, I was like, oh my goodness, look at Autumn. She's good. She's got to go and drink no more liquor. She pulled out her liquor out and stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm proud of you, girl. But then I realized she was trying to clean the money or make the money that she had been wiring herself that she was trying to make it seem like she had made it in the um, club so she can open up a bank account. So I guess nobody would try to trace back where she's getting these large sums of money. So we see her that she does these trans transactions a couple of times, she bought herself a little hoopty doll. I was like, okay, girl, look at you getting a car and get from point A to point B. But I'm trying to figure out what she's stacking the money to get because I'm still not sure. And I need her to work on these wigs, okay? Because the blonde wig was cute. The braids out less lie. But that first wig that she wore to go get that money, I was just like, no, boo, boo, this ain't, that ain't it, sis. So, um, she does a couple of transfers. She's still transferring everything under Lakeisha Savage. She opens the bank account. But also, too, she's trying to get her pole skills together. So Gidget was trying to teach her stuff. And clearly, Autumn's heart just was not in this. And so she was like, well, it's not about your strength. And I was like, well, Gidget, it is about your strength because you have to be able to lift your entire, you're lifting your body weight up on the pole. So it is kind of about strength. I can see where you say you need to look, trust the pole and stuff like that. But she does need to have the, the strength to lift her behind up on that pole. So I don't know what's going to happen because she's trying to like get her all her little coins and stuff. And I was just like, I don't know if your heart is really it or if you have the dedication to have what it takes to be able to be a part of the trifecta. That's why they said they're going to be called salt and pepper until she get her stuff together. I said, I ain't even mad at it. But <clears throat> she ends up talking to Uncle Cliff. And so basically she says that even if you pay off your debt, they're still going to find a way to take your place, which she's absolutely right because they don't care about like how much they have to pay for it. Well, actually they do because they, the bill did say that they have to stay within a budget, but they want to make sure that casino gets, the, gets brought to the city. So I believed her when she told uncle Cliff that, and I really hope that, I really hope that uncle Cliff like took heed to her advice. Like they're going to find something to do. Even if you pay off your debt, they're going to find a way to take your place away. I guess foreshadowing the ordinances that uh, the mayor is supposed to put in place in order for them to close. So we see that um, uncle Cliff wants her to get more info on Andre. She was like, no, he's taking pictures of me. He's a creep. And then uncle Cliff was like, girl, he was like, yo, Pete, yo, yo, uh, yo, kitty cat ain't that good. It ain't good, honey. He had pictures on me, too. You think you sitting up here thinking that you special, thinking that he was just stalking your behind. Look, it's pictures of me and everybody else up in here. You are nothing important. That's what, like, he was trying to tell her. But 
she basically goes to Andre. She ends up going to Andre and apologizes. I guess she felt a little easier about it because maybe she thought that he was going to try to look into her past. And so now that she realized that he was looking into other people, she goes to talk to him, tries to apologize. Andre wasn't having a child. He was being mad disrespectful too because he was basically saying that... Um, he told her, he was like, why are you up here trying to talk to me? Why don't you go home and be a responsible mother and read a book instead of being out here thotting? I was like, wow, boo-boo. I wasn't thotting when you was going to look for that condom to go not be, get up in there. You, were, you, you didn't have no issues then. You knew I had a kid. You didn't have no issues whatsoever. You didn't have no issues when you brought your little raggedy behind up here and back into that boom-boom room thinking that I was going to be in there. You didn't have no issue then, Andre. This, this, I, I, I ain't gonna waste my the rest of my little asthmatic breath on him, okay? So, she ends up crying. She started hitting him and stuff like that. I hate you! Hitting him, and then he hugging her, consoling her. I was like, look at these little buddies. They both raggedy. They deserve each other. So, he ends up, she spends the night, and um, she ends up telling him that she did lose her daughter. So, we, it's confirmed that she lost her child. So... You know, they kind of have a conversation back and forth. Nothing really happens between them. She was like, she's a lucky girl. I said, is she though? Because he was about to, he was literally going to raw dog you if you didn't tell him to go get a condom. Then he was going to go get a condom and come and like knock the walls out. So I don't necessarily know if she's a lucky person or not. But I mean, it is what it is. But <clears throat> Mercedes. I felt so bad for Mercedes. I was so so heated at her little raggedy bomber Patrice. I didn't know what to do myself. So she goes to talk to the lady at the gym about this, uh, the, the realtor about the space where she wants to do her gym. The lady basically tells her like, I don't know this subscription service is like a good thing. You know, I think you should, if you're gonna charge them 200, you should charge them 250 so you can really make some money. But I don't think this is a long-term thing. I would feel more comfortable leasing it to you than necessarily selling it to you. Um, but she basically believes in herself. She knows how to give an experience. I said, you better tell her, uh, Mercedes, Mercedes and so she told her that she needs to have a down payment by tomorrow to secure the space so of course she calls her mama Patrice her little raggedy mama who wasn't answering her phone calls dodging phone calls but she had told her last week that she was gonna give her her check so I like this line that she says when she says that dreams are expensive dreams are expensive make them pay for what it's worth that's what the realtor told her and I thought that was really good I mean I'm just like she has a point there so um, we see that she goes into her daughter's room. She did have a room for her daughter. I want to learn more about the backstory behind that. Um, just a little bit more. She you can tell she has still been trying to call. She's not answering the phone. But why her mama do that? Why the girl mama or her stepmama, her fake mama, her play mama, whatever you want to call her. She was like, so it's okay. Come to the phone because she on punishment. She'll be back in three months. I said, wow, like your mama petty, petty. I thought my mama was petty, but like your mama petty, petty, like petty, petty. I mean, my mama would keep my phone and she'll answer the phone. She'd be like, well, you know, Sharana don't know. Sharana don't know how to not talk back to her parents. So she can't come to the phone right now. She'll do stuff like that. But I'd be like, dang, she ain't never left no voicemail. I'm just like, ooh, these these new parents, they ain't playing, okay? So <clears throat> we see the coach from the last week's episode. He comes to give her a little chain, talking about, um, she was like, you know, I'd rather have money. And I was like, thank you. Don't nobody want no jewelry. Give me some money, something that I can I can decide what I want to spend my money on. And he was like, well, you know, it's more from where this came from. He was like, you know, basically saying, like, take me up on the offer that I gave you last time I was here so I thought it was they end up getting into it because when the girls bring up to Uncle Cliff that they know about the debt then they find out that Mercedes knew about it Mercedes didn't say nothing this is when they get into the whole situation about she was telling them I always told y'all to stack y'all money have a plan b figure something else out and then she said something real disrespectful to Gidget that made her upset but <clears throat> I thought it was really sweet that when she came back in the next day, they decorated her locker. They had a special outfit. Gidget made sure to let her know that she is still upset with her, but she made sure that she had her outfit and stuff. Um, and I thought it was really cute. And when she went to go tell Big L bye and Uncle Cliff bye, um, she was trying not to cry. cry. Uncle Cliff going to tell her to turn around. That's, now that's the booty that, I, that's the way I want to remember that booty. Then when Big L was like, they took a picture and he was like, make sure you put it on that book of faces. I said, sir, what is a book of faces? I Can somebody let me know what a book of faces is? Because I was mad, confused, okay? Um, but it did give me a good chuckle. But, <clears throat> I, baby, let's talk about this raggedy mama. 
Let's talk about Ragni Mama. Okay, so she, I thought she was about to do right by her daughter. She was in the car, she's singing with her vape. It gets me every time when I be seeing her smoke this vape and her singing. And then basically the homeless man threw a quarter in there talking about, I don't need crack with a voice like that. I said, sir, if you don't sit your little raggedy behind down. Um, but then when she told the girl to have a, um, she withdrew the 20000 she closed the account. Um, we saw that later in the episode, she ends up getting into it with the preacher she was like she was doing her little praise and worship stuff then she started to talk about she brought in like i don't need no hateration i said girl why are you mary j blige in the audience right now you was getting them devon cox last week now you're giving them mary j blige this week i was really confused but i literally died but when he tried to take the mic from her as she was catching the spirit she didn't walk her behind all the way up to the pulpit like she preached and giving them a little uh, sunday preview I was like, he tried to snatch that. She snatched that stuff right back. Then he dragged her to the uh, room. And then she was like, oh, so do you tell all your little church hoes that they gonna get a shot at the pulpit? I said, oh, so you and the pastors was bumping and grinding. Oh, okay, that's how we getting down in the house of the Lord. All right, all right, all right. But, <clears throat> y'all, I do want to bring to y'all attention that she told the lady to have a night, have a blessed effing day to the lady who was blowing the horn to her earlier in the episode. I was just like, I don't think that's what the saints supposed to be saying, Patrice, but okay. But I was just like, wow. So her mama shows up. I was like, oh, okay, good. She's going to give her the money. So she tells her she's going to meet her at the spot by the Kroger, you know, and then she goes to find a realtor. She tells the realtor like, hey, my mama's coming right now be just a few moments and she's like oh someone already bought it and i was like please lord lord please don't tell me her raggedy mama patrice was the one who went and bought that spot so she looking like mama and she's like oh you bought this spot for me thank you and then she was like no this is the new spot the lord been, i've been praying about it all day the lord put it on my heart this is gonna be where my church is at baby when i say i was ready to go through the screen and snatch her up like i was i was Ooh, I was ready to break all of my nails, all right? I was so happy when I saw her trying to beat the mess out of her mom. And I said, I know I'm going to hell for that. But if my mom would have did that to me, I I I I think I think that I think the devil would have gotten a hold of me and would have made me put put hands on my mama. I, I'm not even gonna lie. Daddy, if you're watching this, do not show this part of the video to my mama and you been snitching lately and i'ma tell you about yourself when i get you on the phone again but we're gonna talk about that later but yes i like so we see at the end of the episode we see her mama roughed up mercedes roughed up and they both in the police cars that's why she missed the whole performance at the paint i don't know what's gonna happen but talk about a trap her mama laid the ultimate trap for her i just thought that was so shady that was so disrespectful like who does that? So I need to know more background into Mercedes and her raggedy mama Patrice. Like I need to, I need more background because that was just too much. Like I, when I say I was literally shook, like I had nothing else to give. I'm glad they ended the episode. Cause when I tell you I had nothing else to give, I had nothing else to give. Cause I felt betrayed. Okay. So P Valley getting good y'all. Like this ended, I was like, wow, what is going to happen now? She going to have to go back to stripping. Like, then you saw when her and Autumn got into it. Why does she hate Autumn so much? And I can understand why Autumn hates her because she always disrespectful to her. But I'm just like, y'all, this little yellow bone stuff becoming a bit too much. I know Autumn might not be my favorite person, but y'all got to leave this girl alone because it's just way too much. I just don't understand why y'all be ganging up on her like this. But I like this episode. This episode was really good, y'all. I can't wait to see what happens. I still want to see Mississippi Raggedy Baby Daddy. I'm happy that she got her shine, though. I'm ready, okay? And I'm going to see what ordinance uh, the mayor going to put in place to make sure that the pink shut down. So, and then Cliff, Uncle Cliff got some. Eh, 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 eh. Okay, let me stop. Okay, so those are my thoughts on P-Valley. Uh, season 1, Episode 4, A Trap. As always, my name is Sharonda from Payroll Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, bye!